Bebop. All right. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, man. Good to uh, talk to you in real time. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> but uh, you, you were asking um, how many pieces I keep for myself. Yeah. Not many. Yeah. I, I, can't. I have. I think I can think of one. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And it was about my kids, or sort of. But I but got yeah, yours no, in the I, mail today. I got the uh, I got the Willie Mays and the Cool Papa Bell in the mail today. So I've got nice, three right now. Yeah, they're nice. Ah, I, like I appreciate them. that. Yeah. But yeah, I actually made a little slideshow. We'll see how this goes. This is cool. a new of your work oh so so, to say that up top ashton barker also known as mini league mini league of heroes i knew i was gonna mess that up (laughs) no problem yeah i had gotten used to the cracker jack minis yeah i know i like that name a lot but then my girlfriend's you know she made an interesting point which is that for like you know uh cross streaming for um, like the website, for example, there's like a copyright issue there, um, you know, because of Cracker Jack, obviously. And then like with Cracker Jack, that's specifically referencing baseball, which is not the only thing that I carve. So, yeah. or, you know what I mean? So I, I did that with um, that baseball account. It should be El Santo Sports, maybe. But I like uh, it, man. I, it kind of sounds like a baseball club. You know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as if We're, like Ric Flair is in the baseball club. <laughs> well, I, I went into kind of this psycho thing where uh, I made El Santos World, El Santos Wrestling. <laughs> I think there was right. like five of them, and I think the three active ones are World, Baseball, and Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. cool though. I like your page. Um, yeah, this the slideshow. Oh yeah, cool. Oh wait, that's not it. <laughs> All right, I told you this would be. Uh... I'm not editing this out either. Oh cool. We'll just, uh, we'll just see this. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally unrelated slideshow. I want to remember my mistake. Are those Let's some see. brick and mortars that you might uh, rent? There we go. No, that that, that was. Um, oh, there we go. I nice. used to work with a nonprofit. I might. Oh, okay. Be running a nonprofit soon. Yeah, I heard you yeah. talking about. That. Yeah. Cool. But um, yeah. So your work. How tall mm-hmm. are these? So these are the six by twos. This is um, a recent iteration of the carving practice. These are the biggest ones that I've made. The other ones, the bulk of them are 4.5 to 5 inches, roughly. Yeah. So yeah. for the listening audience, we will use our powers of articulation here. Mm-hmm. You, you missed the part where I missed, messed up the slideshow. <laughs> yeah, so what I do is, um, what I, do is uh, I carve sports figurines. Um, I guess you could call it folk art. Uh, and primarily what I've done is baseball figurines, but usually they're vintage baseball figurines. I don't really have an interest in carving newer sports icons. You know, I have carved a couple of newer guys, but for the most part, what I'm interested in is connecting to the nostalgia factor. For me, that's artistically what I'm interested in doing. Yeah. Yeah. So here we've got Jack Johnson on the right. Jack Johnson was the, is the only boxer I've done so far. And um, I consider what I'm doing to be connecting to the past. I could see a Jack Johnson figurine like this on some kid's mantle in 1926 because his grandfather carved it for him, you know? And so I feel like a lot of this is preserving history and that's kind of what I guess got me interested in doing this i dig it yeah 
So how long have you been carving? The, the first time I carved anything was eight years ago. I was working as a camp counselor at a Boy Scout camp, and I got hired as the wood carving instructor, and I knew nothing about wood carving. <laughs> and so uh, the first week, there was all this curriculum that I was supposed to teach them, and I don't, I don't know how to do that. And I was just like, all right, um, let's carve some chess pieces. That seems easy enough. And so... Um, I ended up carving like half of a chess set. So like 16 pieces and I really enjoyed the meditation of it. Yeah. And um, so, but that was the last time I carved until I started doing this. Babe Ruth was the first one that I got that I carved when I got back into it. Um, yeah. yeah. I've um, carved little relief kind of portraits. Oh yeah. Um, you're right. Like the, there's a calmness to that. It's really messy, yeah. but yeah, super which messy. Is strange coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by relief portrait? Like, uh, I did one of Manny Pacquiao, and then I just kind of carved his face into the, like I think it was a five by seven, like it was a painting, uh -huh. and then I painted it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I've noticed that your paintings have some, like, interesting texture. Some of them have, like, the Willie Mays has this kind of flap. Uh, mm -hmm. It almost, almost, like, glued to his face. Is that... Like, I have... I like that. Well, I, I have kind of the same interest that you do. Like, you know, you thinking of Jack Johnson being on some kid's shelf in the 20s. Yeah. I, I like to think of the stuff I make is it has layers and it's aged and it's a relic. I like that, that. That's what yeah. drew me to your stuff. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. been, it's been a really cool journey. I definitely plan on doing more of the, the bigger pieces going forward. This, so this Mickey mantle, what we're looking at right now is this Mickey mantle. I made that as a gift for my girlfriend's dad. And um, I made the Mickey mantle and then I was like, well, what am I going to put it in? Cause it's for Christmas. <laughs> and I remembered thinking about when I was a kid, I used to have these really historically accurate, um, like wartime figurines from different world wars. They were called soldiers of the world and they would have like really historically accurate uniforms. And then, you know, maybe a bio or whatever. Um, I actually had a Ted Williams one that I got for Christmas one time, but, um, and that's how I found out about Ted Williams. But yeah, I remembered those boxes and how, how cool the boxes were. And so I repurposed this box that I had in my house. I cut it out, cut out the window, I actually repurposed a to go box for the window on this thing. And, uh, so yeah, and all of the surface area is repurposed cardboard as well. So it's entirely recycled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I um, yeah, I like yours too, man. I like the, um, how did, so I'm, I was curious, I heard you talking in a podcast episode about how, and we have a similar background. You started with photography. Mm -hmm. Um, how did, uh, how did you end up coming to painting? And then you said that you sold like $3,000 worth of, <laughs> of paintings, your first art show. That's really impressive. How many paintings did you sell? Well, it was it wasn't um it was like a wine fair that was the first time i i went out and said hey i'm a painter and yeah. it felt really weird right and I, it was a like two big ones like 30 by 40s something like that maybe more than that mm -hmm. and then just random stuff it adds up if, you, if your day is going well. Yeah, of course. Were you always... But, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Were you always doing the um, kind of the nostalgia stuff, the pop art stuff? Or was it... No, in the beginning, I wasn't. I had an aversion to it because I, I was listening to other people that if you did pop art, you weren't a real artist 
and <laughs> and so I would do them, but I would do them like really small and timidly, like and you were ashamed. <laughs> yeah, you know, but those were the ones I really liked. I, I like my personal work, but it's harder for other people to connect with that sometimes. Whereas, yeah. you know, you paint, even an obscure person, it, whoever pops on that piece, like, it's that's such a cool feeling. Yeah, you absolutely. Have that instant dialogue, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there have been some pieces of yours, like, um, uh, I, feel, I think it was Stan Musial. It was some guy with his leg kicked up. Oh, and then El Tiante, the pitchers on the mound. Yeah. I don't even know who those guys are. I've never like done any research on them. But as soon as well, I saw it, I was like, oh, I could put that on my wall for sure. You know? Most of the guys I paint, I never saw play. Yeah. I've seen them on YouTube. I've watched maybe documentaries. I've seen vintage photographs. But yeah. like you, I'm I'm drawn to like that other time. Yeah. And then definitely. When I do more modern stuff, I like to put them in that eras. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those for sure. eras. Yeah, yeah, so Nolan here is the <laughs> most modern baseball player I've done, and the only reason I did Nolan is be, because to put it into context, I'm f originally from Houston, and I hate okay. the Dallas sports world. I don't like any of the Dallas teams, and um, it's just like it stems from childhood. My parents always hated Dallas teams. And so I wouldn't want to do a ranger or a cowboy or anything like that. But uh, I saw this Nolan Ryan documentary and um, I really liked his caricature. He was just like such a Texas good old boy, you know, such a simple guy. And then there's that classic image of him with, you know, his mouth dripping with blood. And I was like, oh, man, I've got to do that piece yeah, for sure, you know. Taking the fastball from Bo Jackson. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That, so you you were born in Houston? No, actually, I was born in Germany. My dad was in the army when I was born, um, and we lived there till I was two, and then we moved back to Houston for pretty much until I was like seven. I lived in Houston. My dad um, was in Houston up until the year two thousand. He's from Ailey for originally. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're familiar. Yeah. Where well, are you I, from? Uh, I was born in Chicago, and then we moved to Houston when I was five. Yeah. So, what area? Well, when we got there, we lived in Spring Branch, then on the north side. Oh, okay. And we ended up in Waller. Yeah. And then Cypress. Daniel Johnston lived in Waller. Did oh, you know yeah. That? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I, I I wasn't too crazy about Waller. It was so far out. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happened with um, my dad moving us. So my mom moved all over my whole childhood. We lived all over Texas in a lot of small towns. But then my dad, he moved to, because my parents divorced, of course, when I was a kid, uh, when I was like two. And so my dad moved to uh, from Houston to like rural Austin area when I was like nine. And so he moved us literally out to the country and coming from, you know, Houston, I didn't know what to do with it. It was such a weird thing. <laughs> and, um, and I hated it at first, uh, but there was just so much time for creativity, you know? Yeah. So there was that. The, the Nolan Ryan thing makes me laugh because, you know, he was very much a Houston thing when I was a kid and yeah. I never, kind of forgave the Astros for letting him go. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I know. I yeah. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. You've been doing watercolor. Yeah. Well, so. so I did I did both of those in the last 24 hours. I was just like, you know, mm -hmm. there's it's like what you were saying actually with your watercolors how um it's just more immediate and yeah. there there are so many times when like I'll be sitting here I like to keep the projects going. And if I'm not inspired by making something and I'm thinking about it, I just want to see something finished. And so I decided to do a couple of classic players. We've got Smokey Joe Wood here from the Boston Red Sox and then uh, Christy Mathewson. 
Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And those are on the small little, the little like artist cards, you know, like the artist trading cards. Have you seen those? Yeah. Those are I, cool. I have. I um, like those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I take those. So are you, you got. said that you, you said that you might be doing um, like a nine to five with the nonprofit again soon or what? No, it's definitely not a nine to five. What happens is <laughs> I'm inheriting the responsibility for a nonprofit. Okay. So, um, it'll be run on my schedule. <laughs> yeah, but, that's cool. Yeah, it, it should be cool. At, at first, we'll start with minimal programming and then mainly the, the shows are very important to me and then i do this thing called the little monster project project and uh yeah so which, which is like teaching kids kind of mm -hmm. and or teaching kids <laughs> teaching them what well it was something like my kids and i started during covid we, I would sit here and draw monsters with them. And so we started to make these kits that had paint and cardboard and brushes and pre-drawn monsters. And then we would leave them in front of the nonprofit where I worked. And, oh. and so that that's what that was. But then, I don't know. I liked it. So... How, so uh why why did you guys move to the dallas area i relocated here for the, my my ex-wife's work and i got kind of oh. stranded here <laughs> oh okay okay yeah. and you're a full-time artist right you're doing that full-time like income wise did we freeze i didn't um yeah i keep freezing I don't okay. know. It is cold here. So I don't know if our electrical is being funny. But yeah, I it, it's a full time thing. It's been I started in photography. Right. And then when I did that I worked more commercially as well. It kind of yeah. balanced out. But then once I started doing this crazy stuff, there was no balance. <laughs> like, um, well, I guess like the nonprofit work at that uh, that last one, I had a modest, modest salary, mm -hmm. but you know it wasn't it wasn't much. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I I would love to get to the point where I'm selling even a fraction of what I'm creating, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, I, I like to think of. I like to think of like, who can I gift these to? Like I made a couple of uh, Negro league greats and I was like, man, it would be really cool to gift this to some guy who was like a fan of Sash. You know what I mean? When he was a kid, you know? So I like yeah. to think of that as well, but and eventually I plan to move on to bigger, maybe natural wood, you know, like recycled wood or something. Yeah. Cause I don't know if like, I don't know what the practices are with harvesting basswood. It can't be great. You know, right. I don't know if there are basswood farms. I need to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But that, that's an interesting point. Yeah. So, but you, you started in photography or videography? Yeah. Well, it was like, I mean, my artistic interests have always spanned across mediums and mm -hmm. so i've always just called myself an artist um but i mean i've done a couple of documentaries like shorter documentaries and a lot of like film photography and so it was always kind of scattered but the last few years i've had more of a discipline in filmmaking where i was going around and doing a lot of shooting and then editing edited some pretty big projects together um and photography was always an interest because I grew up around photographers. My dad always shot film and then 
my stepmom's dad has been a photographer in Houston for like 50 years. So um, it was always What's just going around. Terry Balch. He owns, he used to own a studio, but now it's just a business, but it was called Chadwick Studios. And he was open in Houston, I think. Um, I want to say like, up now. yeah, Chadwick Studios. It's been there forever. I mean, he was he was doing headshots for celebrities back in the day. Kind of, he was kind of in that whole like his era of Houston was like the Towns Van Zant, you know, Guy Clark era. You know what I'm saying? That's when he was mm -hmm. coming up. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. But yeah, so it's always been like visual art has always been an interest. And uh, so this is more cerebral, I would say. I like the, it a the lot. The woodwork, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's also it, maddening, you know. It, <laughs> how so? <laughs> well, it's like, you know, um, going for absolute perfection on like a logo of a team, <laughs> like a really tiny logo of a team. <laughs> That's... That's like, that can be kind of maddening sometimes. Or like the numbers, I try to get the numbers very accurate to the uniform form, like the font of the number, you know? So that can be frustrating. It, it reminds me of this, when I did photography, I would do articles and one was with this chef. And I think it was a question about presentation and he started this whole long dialogue about you know you don't just a baby doesn't just get up and walk or run and the whole progression of that he's like it's like that with repetition in anything you're doing and yeah the drawing like i, I draw every day i make something every day and and i'll get asked how do you do things so fast I'm like well it's easy if you do it every day for a number of hours <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. Then it, it is easy <laughs> absolutely yeah it becomes part but, of you but yeah it, it gets less maddening i think is my point mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah no, i appreciate that i appreciate that i will say the bigger ones are less maddening as far as the uniforms go. The bigger ones are so much fun, man, because they're so dynamic. I can make actual poses. The little ones are really just kind of caricatures, you know, can't really do poses with a one inch piece of wood necessarily. It's hard. I think working bigger in general is easier. Yeah. And I think it's funny because sometimes people try to shrink the pieces. I guess because it's more cost effective. I'm like, you know, I'm going to charge you more if you make me draw that small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, totally. This is a commission and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I... So, yeah, I really, uh, I really like um, the dancing letters. How did that come about? Was that just kind of like, were you trying to get something straight and or trying to fit something in? And then <laughs> you're like, you know what, let's just play with it. How did that come about? Well, like I said, I had a big aversion to doing pop art. And what happened is 2016, I moved here. I didn't know anybody here. I wasn't an online artist. I was starting to do YouTube and using it a little bit. But yeah, so <laughs> I found a bar to let me set up in front of them on a Saturday and traffic was not stopping you know with my big weird art and so i was like you know i'll make some album covers i had been wanting to do this <laughs> and so the first one was like a johnny cash i, I keep freezing but I was, I was sitting there trying to kind of like you're describing, get the lettering right. Yeah. And um, suddenly I felt like a real jackass. It's like, what am I doing? And 
I just started messing with the letters. And yeah, I started to show that around town. And I like the reactions to it. The, my favorite was in a clash piece where this British guy comes into the booth I'm showing at, at this festival. And he says, do you not know how to spell London? I'm like, well, I was right there. And, <laughs> and then he, uh, I still don't think he appreciated the piece, but I like that it was messing with him. Yeah. And so I, sometimes I'll turn up the volume on that. Sure. And, and mainly it's amusing me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not, I don't know, there, there isn't like a deep meaning, you know, it partially it's, I have a literature background, language really? and that type of stuff. Yeah, I writing. I went to college, undergrad for literature, and then another degree in philosophy. And then I cool. went through the master's program for a literature degree. And then nice. I said, no more Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, I like to. I mean, playing with the form, you know, can be fun. Uh, I did this. I did this watercolor of a Joe DiMaggio earlier and uh, I messed up on the shading. And so I started playing with it and just like threw way too much black on his face. And mm -hmm. he looks like he's got this look in his eyes, kind of a sad, like tired look. And then the rest of his face is looks like he just came out of like a nuclear blast or something, but he's at the plate with his Yankee uniform on. I like that kind of juxtaposition. Yeah. You know, I like playing with um, the figurines too. Like I definitely plan on doing something kind of surrealist with the figurines, you know, like mm. maybe I like throwing a little bit of blood in there sometimes that doesn't necessarily need to be there. You know what I'm saying? Something. For a while, kind of yeah. yeah. For, for a while I was giving my wrestlers black eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Dude. When I was a kid uh, with my little, soldiers of the world figurines my favorite thing was like i would get my crayola markers and i would do makeup on them for like black eyes and blood because if you mix purple and red together or blue and red together you get a nice purple and then you can shade it you can literally just kind of like like makeup shade it around their eye and then you can if you if you would jam the red marker into their nose it would bleed and so they would have this perfect, like, crimson blood coming out of their nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. I forgot. I have a banner I made. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm still use, I'm still learning to use StreamYard. But, oh, my God. I hear my kid. I don't know what time to do things at. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you have? Three? Two? <sighs> three nice that's cool yeah that's cool it is cool it's a lot of work but yeah fort worth is supposed to be kind of cool right i know a cool guy from fort worth there we go and he always goes back to fort worth so there must be something cool about it right honestly <laughs> i don't get out much oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, it's yeah i'm overwhelmed by kids and um work so yeah i but you know the times have been out it's cool there was um yeah when, when i used to do live shows more that was cool but i liked it better when we were doing our own kind of because i'm in a little suburb yeah but it um but yeah there, there's definitely cool artists out here. Mm -hmm. So your style of painting was that, because uh, I've, I've seen some of your stuff that looks more kind of like technical. Mm -hmm. Like you did a Babe Ruth that's a little bit, it's kind of different than the stuff that I see on some of your other stuff. Like your style, did that evolve or did you have like a classical painting background and then kind of, how did it, come about well when i first started to really paint 
I, like I said, I'm going to do this. I don't know what the hell happened, really. I, I was collaborating with a painter, and she kind of shoved materials into my hand, and I started painting. And I was like, man, this is cool. Because I'd already, I'd always seen like Bob Ross, and I'm like, wow, that's so not interesting. <laughs> like, I zero desire to do. Even my sister would draw, and it was very. And I was like, what is that? Yeah. And so to just let loose, because she was very abstract. And then I started to think about the painters that I like the pieces that that kind of stopped me and they weren't painting anything like Bob Ross mm -hmm. and so that kind of started it but you know uh, I think a few years into it I started to look at people who could do realism and so I got a teacher and she taught me classical and cool. and I was like, oh wow. Yeah, um, well, it was weird because she was very. <laughs> it's funny. I always remember she she took me to her her teacher, who was probably in her eighties, and it was like going to Yoda. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and she very she very apologetically says that you know I'll be joining the class today. And, you know, he just started learning the style. And she says, the teacher says, well, you draw for me. And there was somebody, a model. And I'm like, okay. And then she turns to, to my teacher and she says, he can really draw. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm like, yeah, okay. Because, nice. you know, in, in school, no, nobody said that. <laughs> right. You know, what's interesting about school learning as far, like school art goes, um, I remember being obsessed with making comics when I was a kid, when I, I would come home and like, I learned how to draw from comic books, you know? And so I had this little, um, these two series that I was doing, one was this little mafioso and his oafish son. And then this other one was like this, this pop group that I, I was inspired by Michael Jackson and his many faces. And so yeah. I would just do different variations of this pop group looking completely different, right. Through the iterations of their career. And, um, and like, I was obsessed with drawing and I was doing it all the time. And then I would go to school and my art teacher for three years was teaching us about technically technical drawing techniques and, you know, like shading and all that stuff. And she was telling me how bad I was all the time. And I was like, really? Because I feel like I'm, I'm obsessed with this. I'm doing this all the time. How can I be bad at it, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, it, and I kind of had that experience with a couple of art teachers. And uh, I think that that's maybe what took me away from drawing a little bit as a kid, which is really sad because it was something that I, it was my first love as far as, you know, art goes. So I think that it can be, a little harmful for kids art I class. I think it's harmful <laughs> for adults. Yeah. The the thing I always hear like oh I can't even draw a straight line and like this is an accomplishment. <laughs> and it's just, it's a witty <laughs> whimsy thing to say it's small talk which I don't do well with. <laughs> No, that's okay. That's good. It, turns, <laughs> it turns into a philosophical discourse for me. And to me, it's like, who hurt you? <laughs> right. You know, who? <laughs> yeah. And when, when I, that, that experience with the teacher, I was like, you know, my teacher was hurting me. She kept telling me I was doing things wrong. And then, you know, the Jedi master said I was doing fine. Yeah, and... <laughs> totally. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah I no, remember yeah. looking at what I was doing and I was like, this is good, you know? Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I feel like, um, yeah, style comes out of 
there are so many times when I think that I've made a mistake and then I see that there's some perfect representation of what I was trying to do that came from that mistake. Like, like, like out of that mistake, some, some avenue to get to what I was looking for appears. I'm like, Oh shit. I wasn't even trying to do that, you know? Yeah. And so well, that's the process. Yeah, exactly. And so it inspires looseness a little bit, you know? And, um, yeah, I feel like with the, like when I'm drawing, there's a lot more looseness with the figurines, even, um, yeah. like the first couple, the first few that I was doing were so many of them, like the first, I think three or four, I, I was like the Ted Williams that I made, which I'm really happy with was supposed to be Willie Mays. And then I looked at his body shape and I was like, this does not look like Willie Mays. This guy's really skinny. Who does this look like? And I was like, wait, that kind of looks like Ted Williams. He's like kind of hunched over and he's scrawny. And so then I just shaved the face down and like shaved the nose down. And I was like, that's Ted Williams, <laughs> you know? And yeah. so, no, I, I love it. And, uh, and with, you know, just kind of playing around with the poses, it, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, and like just the, the art of like these figurines, like being able to hand somebody a representation of, something that they really loved as a kid is such a cool feeling, you know, like I think of, um, I think of my great grandfather who would make these really incredible busts, paper mache busts of everybody in the family, like every kid, every one of his kids, their kids, you know, everybody, he would make these little busts of everybody. And they didn't always look like us, but he, his whole house was lined Every shelf was lined with these paper mache busts of everyone in the family. And so I guess in, in some ways I consider what I'm doing, like I said, a like a continuation of history, preservation of, you know, something yeah. that civilizations have always done. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, art is part of the dialogue. However, Absolutely big or small you're you're approaching it 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 is part of human dialogue that's always been the appeal to me but especially drawing from the past i mean and it happens in everything like i've been <laughs> i've been drawing these music guys for tiktok and i it's funny because i'll tap into different crowds and so they're giving me argentini in rappers and then oh cool rap, rappers from mexico stuff i haven't heard yeah but then like i start to listen and i hear you know all these different styles meshing in a modern way and i think it's funny is my mom always has the her dia tribe on you know music was like this and then why did these artists do this and i'm like well why would they do the same thing that the other artist did that's already done yeah you know to the thing is and that thing you're talking about looseness that's where kind of the glory of expression is is in the where it is imperfect where it is imbalanced and then you find your way and it is kind of more perfect yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, the first painting of yours that I saw was, uh, I think it was the, uh, it might have been the Joe Jackson, but it, I think it was the Satchel Page. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh man, that is it right there. Like, I just, I just understood it, you know, like I just felt what you were doing. As soon as I saw it, the, the dancing letters and like, you could tell it was the person, but there was some expression there. And yeah, there's just not enough of that. There's, there's a lot of perfection out there, you know? And I mean, everybody does their own thing. You know, it's just, it's not what I want to create. I go back to the Bob Ross thing. Yeah, lovely work, but do I want to make that? Right. <laughs> a little bit of yellow ochre. <laughs> that ochre Green. yellow with that titanium white. <laughs> well, it reminds me of I stopped giving critiques years ago. 
yeah. once in a while somebody will get me but because mm -hmm. yeah You froze again. Man. <laughs> My connection's tricky tonight. But yeah, so we were in photography class together, this ex-girlfriend. And mm. so she shows me some work. And I'm like, OK. And she's pushing. and. I'm like, well, I'm like, it's like this. This is a cup. Mm -hmm. You took a picture of a cup. Nice cup. <laughs> and that's what these photographs were. And I'm like, we, we have, you can do that, certainly. But, you know, we already know what the cup looks like. Like, don't you want to mess with it? Don't you want to... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I know who Satchel Page is. I've seen mm -hmm. pictures, but I want to mess with that idea, that that perception, and mm -hmm. on many levels. Yeah. So, and that's that's how I approach pop art. Yeah. That's cool. Were you into street photography at all when you were doing a lot of photography? trying to think that uh, yeah at first you just kind of go around exploring the world yeah but eventually i got really thematic and that's what really took me into painting because really i was trying to paint yeah that that same ex didn't want me to paint because i would mess up the house and she was right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> but, yeah, I remember, especially when Photoshop came along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I really don't first... like. Um, I, that uh, that was one of the things with, uh, like editing my film. I didn't like editing my film photography. You know, I didn't like mm -hmm. to. I mean, so, sometimes I would edit it a little bit but i really don't like to have to go through the lightroom and everything and then like play with the lighting like i like getting a perfect shot on the roll and that is like such a good feeling when you see that you did it right you know when you got a good exposure but then i don't want to have to go bring something out that that i didn't discover myself i guess you know yeah i I started with film and then with digital, we became desk people. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and I, I got, like that. I got really sad. And that's right. really where the transition into paint came was like, I don't want to be at a desk so much. Yeah. Then, you know, now I talk to my phone a lot, but that's okay. I still get messy. I still. I still get in there, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, m more so than the other stuff. That's a right. tricky balance, though, because you know I, I need to keep these pieces moving. Yeah, of so, course. I heard you say yeah. something recently. Um, I heard you say that uh, that you'll do paintings that commissions that you don't like, um, but then there are other times that you'll obviously draw the line with something that you really don't want to do. I was talking to somebody yeah. recently who asked me if I would do, he was throwing out tons of ideas and he didn't actually commission anything. He's just messaged me a few times and asked me, Hey, will you do this? Will you do that? I'm like, yeah, I do those guys. But then he asked me, would you do um, somebody from planet of the apes from the original planet of the apes? And I was like, I've never really been into the <laughs> apes to be honest. So I don't think I would do that. And he was like, well, you know, I mean, it's it's nostalgia. You can make money if you're doing stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll do Cool Hand Luke. If we're talking about nostalgia, like I'll do nostalgia. But there are certain things that I just 
I don't think I can find inspiration in, you know? I mean, I'll take on things I have no clue about. But part of that is I get curious. Like, somebody commissioned Stevie Ray Vaughan. I've never listened to him, seen the name. But then I put his records on while I was painting, and I was like, I get it. You know, I, I still didn't like it. But <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. enjoyed. Um, I yeah, I like seeing, well. seeing. Yeah, what what they liked about it, and that that's kind of like, in. I was just out of college, and I had this room, this uh, dark room job. And so on my lunch break, I'd go to the contemporary museum or the museum but the contemporary always had wild stuff and a lot of times i didn't like the exit like i didn't get it and so when that would happen i would make myself really look at it like sometimes they were film sometimes they were installation but i would I'd sit there until I could process why this was in here, why someone took interest. Because I think that understanding was important. It is important, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think um, actually Willie Mays was somebody that I didn't know anything about until I took on my first Willie Mays commission and, uh, I watched a documentary about him as I was making him and grew an appreciation for him and really, really, you know, dug making that piece as a result. Yeah, I, I love that. Well, like the rappers I've been doing lately, no clue who these guys are. Yeah. I've been like, I'll dig in and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I like that Chilino Sanchez you made. I like Chilino. <laughs> Chilino. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely plan. I mean, I, I love making the sports figurines. Um, it's, it's a like I said, a connection to, I think, like, actually, um, what my initial interest was or my initial plan or thought was, like, oh, you know what? I want to make, like, a Stratomatic baseball board game because I was getting into baseball kind of for the first time in my life. Cause I was watching all these like Ken Burns baseball and like learning about like the early 20th century era of baseball. And uh, I was like, it'd be so cool to make like a classic baseball set of figurines for this board game. And then that's kind of what got me into it. And then I thought, Oh man, I could totally see these figurines on my grandfather's desk when he was a kid, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so I love doing those, but I definitely plan to switch gears a little bit going forward. Not like entirely. I'm still going to do the figurines, the baseball ones, but yeah, definitely planning on doing kind of more historical figures as well, which I'm excited about. I think in creativity, you, you never know what the hell's next. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just whatever inspires you that day. I stopped thinking this is this is the thing I'm gonna do because it it does always morph. And I realize increasingly how little in control I am. So do you have a piece that you're making right now that you're really excited about? These watercolors I'm addicted to. <laughs> yeah. The I immediacy? Is it stop. the immediacy? I have I have things to do and <laughs> I will just sit here drawing. Um, yeah. The watercolors are fun. Yeah. I've, well, I've, I'm doing that and I'm using acrylic marker. Oh yeah. Which are, like you can layer and yeah, it, but it's kind of having, I remember the story of like if somebody gave Kurt Cobain a new guitar, he would sit there and play it for days. 
because it was his, his new toy. And even though, like, I've used some of these mediums be before, like, it feels that way. Like, it's it's new. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> maybe yeah, I go back. Also, yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. it kind of, it's a nice, it's therapeutic. It takes you away from what you're normally doing, but then you're still working out that, that um need to create something and i like the immediacy of it i like being able to make something in like an hour and then look at it and be like that's so cool and then okay all right now made a couple of those i can go make a piece or something like where i before i was feeling a little stiff and wasn't necessarily ready to start carving or something like that i like the yeah. uh like the watercolor medium as well and i definitely want to get into more acrylic stuff as well yeah. Yeah. So have you set up shop? Oh yeah. It's all I've got um an easel over here. And no, I mean like online. Or oh yeah, yeah. I've got, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got um I've got uh it's a, a weebly piggyback website. It's called mini league heroes dot weebly dot com. Oh and also uh on Instagram it's mini league heroes. Not many league God of heroes. I, I That's changed okay. that no, while we were talking. That. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that until just now. <laughs> no, I. Uh, yeah, and what we're talking about is I made a banner and then I had it correct. But <laughs> then I went. But uh, it yeah, so we it's mini league heroes dot weebly dot com. And there's a store set up on there. Um, and it's a pretty cool little website. I'm the best podcaster ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Is I like. Right? What's that? Did I get it Mini right? Mini league. Uh, so, almost you almost got it. Your the F should be an E. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna. All right, let me put these on. Mini League Heroes. Got it. Yep. Nice. All right. Unedited. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I the the very first episodes when I was doing these, those were probably awful. I don't go back and look at anything. It's like it's too painful. But <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird like the just for as much as i put my face out there like i, I don't ever watch stuff again that's good like, i don't i'm well it's just weird you know i don't <laughs> yeah even like I, i'm not used to seeing myself talk in real time that's weird <laughs> like to another person i've been doing the the rambles but yeah i can lose eye contact a lot right Right. Oh, you don't have to worry about making eye contact. It's all good. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> so the the TikTok, have you um, developed quite a following on TikTok? Or because I've heard from people that I should make a TikTok. I mean, I have one, but I haven't really played with it much. You should get on anything that's out there. <laughs> yeah, like because that's a way different crowd. But I mean, yeah, I've got um, twenty thousand followers. Damn, really? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and you know, I, I always say like some eight-year-old is laughing at my numbers, but shoot, that's good for me, and yeah, it 20, keeps yeah. climbing. So nice. Yeah. It. Do you see commissions it, off of that? I see purchases and yeah. Cool. I saw some big purchases before, like, and I can't put my finger that that came from right here, but I know like last year I had a couple of really big orders. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's where they came from. So the um, stuff that you're doing on there, is it, obviously you do the, the time-lapse watercolors um 
is most of what you do on there like time lapse stuff? Because a lot of the, I feel like a lot of the videos I make are, they're not as quick. It seems as as would be beneficial for like pulling in a lot of clicks. I guess you know, like like I I like to do kind of like shh, like one minute documentary form kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess you know. I think any content. It's about like as artists, we're we're entertainers. So just figuring out how to be that. And and that comes from repetition, just like the drawing every day. Because yeah. I've actually started to view it as part of the art form, part of the existence as who I am as an artist. This is documentation. Right. And it's also got its own expression. Yeah. Which is That's cool. Like no artist before us had that. It's true. It wasn't right at their fingertips. The potential to just say, hey. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I think my uh, my problem with these apps is like, um, I will end up scrolling a lot at funny videos. You know, Mm -hmm. I already do that too much on Instagram. I'll get lost, obviously. Uh, I try to minimize it, but, you know, it happens. But I feel like TikTok is like, it's like on another level (laughs) of entertaining, you know. I like to do that because it keeps me current, especially a younger platform. Like, Yeah. and, And I love that. Some of them are so young because I remember doing a live and it's like, uh, what do you want me to draw? And it was, had to be a kid because it was like, can you do a reindeer? Like, (laughs) yeah. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) It it, it, it just, he just kept going. I was like, okay. A bunny. I was like, yeah. Um, That's great. (laughs) But I think, like I see most of the positive in it, you know, because there's plenty of people that will trash social media, but it's, yeah, I think it's nothing but a, especially as an artist, if you're trying to get your stuff out there, mm. I mean, it's, it's power, dude. <laughs> totally. totally. Well, yeah. yeah. And like, you know, the other thing that's been, uh, a struggle is I try to do these time lapses with the carvings. The carvings take, you know, they take so long. And, um, and so I get like anxiety about sitting there with the camera going for so long. Does that make sense? Well, don't, like, as long as, no? it, even if it turns <laughs> off, like I've messed uh, tons of times, I'll mess up on a time lapse. I'll forget to click on in the middle yeah but um and i edit all this stuff on my phone same so i will just kind of jump cut or put an effect in there yeah and it's like nothing ever happened but yeah the thing when i first started doing those i felt like everyone could see me in slow motion but then when Mm -hmm. i really started thinking about it it's like You know, it's like, yeah. so what? It's the process. That's what happened. Do you think that, well, obviously, uh, TikTok must have been better for your platform because you've got 20,000 followers on there, right? I mean, better than Instagram? Yeah. Instagram is still where a lot of my buyers are. Yeah. Now, growing organically on there... It's it's gone. On Instagram? Yeah. Really? I still, I'll put out ads. I haven't late, I haven't this year as much. Like last year was rough. Um, I think, like as a business owner, it's always, it's always your fault. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking about it 
and you know it makes sense that you know we are a luxury art i don't know there's always somebody that's like arguing but it is it's a this is not edible we will right. not <laughs> yeah. no it's not you, you can't hand it to your kids and say here's dinner yeah You froze. Yeah, I'm back. Cool. <laughs> so you were saying you can't hand it to your kids and say, "Here's dinner." Right. It. it uh, so, from you know, people's budgets that gets cut, and I really saw that it, like around whatever's Black Friday, that zone. Mm -hmm. People were holding back on their purchases. Right. And it wasn't until. You know, Christmas hit, but then I, I started to see some sales. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and those are rough waters. Yeah, but yeah. and it wasn't so bad. I, I think about this a lot. That when I didn't have kids, it you know, it was rough. But so what? I can subsist yeah. minimally. Mm -hmm. I can't do that to my kids. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's so. I've been curious about that with you, like, because you talk about your kids so much, and I know that I can't you, help it. <laughs> I feel no, like I do great. it too much. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, no, but I've been curious because uh, you're a full time artist with three kids, so I've been curious, like, especially because you were talking about how sales had dropped off in one of your podcast episodes, and I was just like, wow, that's that's crazy. That's like pretty ballsy you know like to be a full-time artist yeah <laughs> but it works out which is amazing well you yeah you know honestly i started to do a little ebay because of that because i was thinking about um yeah you know i had turbulence i've had a long career mm -hmm. but yeah i just uh I personally don't need much, you know, I need yeah. the yeah, very same. basics, but you know, I'm like for them, I, I want, I want more. And so, yeah, I started with like records cause I, I bought this collection and I started listing them and then that's just fun to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I did start a side hustle. Yeah. But, but yeah, it, um, and I started to think about that side hustle a lot. I'm like, maybe you should do that a little more as well. So that mm -hmm. when economies do get like that, it, it's not as bad, but really I hadn't seen something like this year since 2008 or nine. Really? Yeah. Huh. But, That's interesting. What do you um, think the difference was? What's that? Do you have an idea of what the difference could have been? Like why, why this year? Things are more expensive. Inflation. Mm. Um, yeah. There's some stuff going on economically. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it trickled down to what I do. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, that's where I'm like, well, maybe you should have something else in place. Right. Yeah. So why do you say if that? I'm not... Go, Go on. I, uh... I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get two ADHD people on the podcast. Are you ADHD? Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. How, how long have you known? Known? How long have I known? Yeah. Uh, I got diagnosed when I was nine. Okay. Yeah. See... So, like, 23 years? I've always been called that, but I got diagnosed last March. Yeah. And then I started learning about it. And I was like, man. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. sucks. No. <laughs> it's like, uh, I've, heard, I've heard that a lot of the obsessive tendencies, um, or that a lot of ADHD people have, like, like hyper obsess about something yeah yeah which 
makes just so much sense. You know? it, it makes sense why I annoyed every relationship I was ever in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm curious. You said that you said that uh, you can't organically grow a following on Instagram anymore. So, um, like your following on Instagram, it's pretty decent. Was that yeah. like pre-pandemic, or or did you? How did how did that grow? I mean, uh, yeah, I worked on that over time. Yeah, the pandemic was good in that sense. But on Instagram, I definitely run ads. I think there's like a certain pride about, oh, I grew this organically. Yeah. But, but ads are you're important. You're putting money into something and it's bringing you buyers. Yeah. Sign me yeah, up. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right about that. I mean, yeah. I feel like some of my reels could definitely be getting like another 10,000 hits and I'd be okay with that <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not impossible, I guess, yeah. but I mean, I, mean, I, I get, at, yeah, I look at TikTok numbers and I'm like, yeah, there's filters in place or something Yeah. versus when I run an ad, less filter, depends how much money you put into the ad. So what would you say is a pretty healthy amount of money to put into an ad for some return? Anytime I run it, um, I'll do six days and I think it costs like 60 something dollars. Mm -hmm. For me, I found that images do much better as far as what I want. Mm, okay. And that's always yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a much better hook than the video. I and I've, I've tested that. Mm -hmm. And anytime I run a an image of mine, it does better than if I do a video. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's good to know. But but Instagram still works in that sense, as far as for what I do, and I think it could work. You froze. There's a really funny face on the screen right now. <laughs> good. Face. good. <laughs> I keep it real. No editing. Raw. <laughs> no, but so um, Instagram works for what you do. Yeah, and I think it can work for for anyone. Really, it just it does always become personal because there are differences. Like mm. I'm different when I make my content. I'm different the way I present myself, just by nature. Right. And I think it's important to lean into that. And with that, you have to figure out kind of your own thing. And I, I do get, I don't know, there, there aren't too many people that, especially in the arts that I hear talking about stuff like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why I like doing these because then we can talk about it and float it out there. Maybe somebody gets an idea yeah. and it helps them do whatever. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I like Instagram. I like the, you know, what's weird and unexpected was I was talking about, we should do whatever, just sign up for whatever, like TikTok or whatever the next thing is. Because I had not used Twitter until until the pandemic, I think, because I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. I, I understand it better. I still probably don't understand it. Mm -hmm. But because I started doing Twitter, I picked up more fans. And Really? Yeah. Do you post thoughts on twitter or what do you post on there well now i got um oh no it froze but yeah the app is called or yeah it's an app i guess buffer 
and it'll schedule your posts kind of like Hootsuite. Hootsuite's more expensive, mm -hmm. but for each one, I have different verbiage. But oftentimes, yeah. the same content just repurposed a little. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think Twitter is more about interaction. Like yeah. talking to the talking to the people in the comment stream more. Just finding other people. It's definitely always respond. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I just pick stuff that I like and you know, we'll banter. And I've made good friends that way. So there's that. Yeah, that's cool. You froze. I don't understand most things. But <laughs> <laughs> you froze but, and then you came back on that line, which is perfect. Yeah. But but I, I do I do um I, I don't know. I just do things. It's an impulse yeah. thing. It's the it's the ADHD. <laughs> you mean like when it comes to apps? To anything. Yeah, just anything in life. Like I, I'm not I don't hesitate. And nice. That's good and bad maybe <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I, I don't i'm not i'm not sitting here thinking about it twice it's like okay let's try it right and yeah and yeah like I, i'm really paying attention because there there will be a next platform mm. and i want to be there i yeah yeah from the whole like um like I said, I started doing eBay stuff mainly because I was on TikTok, and I would see uh, people thrifting and flipping, and they were finding this cool stuff, and I was drawn to that. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I thought about those records, and then I was like, "Oh wow, this is cool." <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> amount of the amount of people that I've met who um, sell like vintage clothes out of their trunk and make mm -hmm. a living. It's really inspiring. And like just go all around the country selling their vintage clothes out of their trunk. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. But I did, oh, yeah. I did know one guy who I knew one guy who like, he made a living off of eBay and he was like, yeah, I mean, it's, I made good money, but it's like 24 hour job and my apartment is just full of stuff, <laughs> you know, like, and he was just like at goodwill all the time, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning a lot from it business wise. So what you're talking about, I don't do that. I nice. don't keep a place full of stuff. I look for stuff that moves and that's all attention. And so yeah, it it's working another part of my brain and even creeping in to what I do marketing wise with the art. I am obsessed with these little watercolor things, but I also realize that like the attention they can get. And also, you know, as I've gained popularity humbly, you know, um, my prices went up. Yeah, sure. And so, an eight by ten, it's like at a hundred now. Yeah, and I realize I need another product. You froze. Yeah, that all came from the eBay thing, and listening to content about running it as a business. Mm -hmm. And what you were talking about, moving things along. It's yeah. kind of the same. Because I keep a big inventory. That was something a friend taught me. You know, keep a big inventory. Then you can do shows. You can do all this stuff with it. And he's mm -hmm. right. And so I was like, doing the eBay thing and you keep an inventory. But you want that moving. Yeah. So it's made me think about, it's influenced the way I do my sales. Mm -hmm. And... And just the fact that you can do that, you know, because 
Yeah, because you have that inventory. You have more maneuvers. And that goes back to the economy of things. Like this, this was a weird year. But I'm more prepared this year. So when you look at... Um... I've been struggling a little, not struggling, but I mean, I know I've, I've got my things priced at a certain price point just based on the amount of time it takes. And I think for the amount of time it takes in the detail and the craftsmanship, it's a good price. But for the little ones, um, what would you say, like, as a shopper, what would you think would be like a good price for the like four, 4.5, five inch tall ones? It depends on what you're doing. You know, do you want them to move fast? Yeah. <laughs> and the price low. Yeah. The price low, you you move them along, you get better, slowly climb that number up. When I right. first started to really hit like online sales, my eight by tens were thirty five dollars. Really? But see, that's the thing with paintings. That's the thing that I love about paintings. And that's why I want to do more of that or, you know, like why I am doing more of that is because I, same thing, I just want an inventory. I want to just create and have what I'm creating surrounding me. And then, you know, obviously I want to sell it, but mm -hmm. I need something that's going to move quicker in my hand as well. And these take, I can finish one of these in a day now, the smaller ones, yeah. but the big ones take like a couple of days. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that, I mean, I guess that's kind of your answer. If you yeah. want to move them quick. And the thing is, if they're moving too quickly, that's what I did was. I yeah. When people are just blowing through five, your inventory. Five, five. And the thing with me and the eight by tens is I was getting a lot of commissions and I always would rather move the stuff I already made right but so i'm like well i'm gonna do a commission it needs to be up and that kind of sucks because you know i can't leave the inventory low like i can't keep an eight by ten i already made at a lower price i could but i noticed that they're like hey you know they try to haggle on the commission so i'm like sure you know it's one price and yeah but then that's, like I said, the doing the eBay thing turned on my business mind more. And it's like, well, when you run a sale, you can really dump some of that inventory. You will get, I will get, and I do get commissions, but that's okay. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of messed with the flow. And that was the other thing that messed me up this year. I realized that, you know, my prices had escalated for different reasons. Mm. It was mainly, but mainly like I was spending too much time on commissions. Yeah. So the, um, you're frozen right now. It's funny because the audio doesn't freeze. It does sometimes. Sometimes it'll hear you. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, uh, okay. So, so everything is even the commissions, like it's just based on size. It's not based on like the difficulty of the commission or are some of the commissions more expensive or no, it's all based on size. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's uh, fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. So I'm, I'm careful. Nothing's become an issue. I was doing these cards where I would put the back of the baseball card in the background of the front. Those were very time consuming, but I didn't do very many of those. But I think if, I don't know, I, I don't know if I'd make a price difference, but I thought about it. Yeah. I'm like, man, that's, that's a lot of work. Or maybe right. I just wouldn't take it as a commission. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Or if I did, yeah. I'm like, I, I need to charge more for that, but it hasn't yeah. been an issue. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's cool they, they were cool but I'm like ah. 
Right. That's how I feel oh. about the boxes. The boxes are like, it's going to take a little bit more money for me to make one of those for somebody. I think, you know, they're just, the boxes are like, I mean, I put, I put a, an acrylic rookie card on there. I put like a little bio, I put maybe a comic or something. And then the front, you know, and like the, the font on top, I mean, like everything, every inch of it is covered in art. So I mean, but I would like to make some more of those. So if anybody's interested, check it yeah. out on Instagram. The Mickey yeah. Mantle box. Mini League Heroes, not of. Mini League Heroes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, at first, um, like when I first followed you, it was it was actually called mini.league.baseball. Um, but... Uh, I don't like the dot dot. I like it all one word because like you can see it in someone's story or something like it's just better for advertising, but there's no, you can't, there's no mini league baseball available all one word. And so I had to play around with it. That's how I got Cracker Jack minis and uh, eventually arrived at mini league heroes. So, and that, th that seems more all encompassing, you know, it's like a hero can be of any genre could be Malcolm X or it could be, Mickey Mantle. Yeah. It's good you're thinking about that. Yeah. And I might I might be thinking about eBay now. <laughs> well, here's the thing, because I'll I'll go look for stuff to flip, but I'm also looking for canvas. Oh for art supplies. Yeah. And that's what really got me into it. Because I'll go and I'll come back with the, a lot of the canvases that I have are repurposed. They're yeah, Ikea I like art. Or, um, I really like that Bob Gibson with the umpire that you were doing. Are you still yeah. working on them? Yeah. Like it, it's, that. An, it's been cold in my studio, so I, it's part oh, of I see. why I'm working in the warm watercolor <laughs> acrylic yeah, station. Yeah. <laughs> acrylic yeah. marker station. But yeah, yeah, I like I like, I like the one. repurposed repurposed material. I think that's that's beautiful. Well, that's just, what it's all about. Yeah, just finding weird stuff like that makes you think differently and it makes you draw differently. Yeah, and that's what's cool about um, the flipping. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've also yeah. found like a couple of actual canvases at Goodwill. Like a few yeah. times, I found some. Yeah. yeah Surprising. Yeah. It, garage sales you could clean up on as far as canvas, especially people do um, paint night, like with the wine and sips. Oh, yeah. I'll take all those canvases for, you know, 25 cents. Really? People just leave them behind? Like, oh, yeah, because then it's that's the embodied, the embodied cost, I guess, of the wine and sip. Yeah, they don't want them. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, and by then, the way, I saw, is this, this is like a coloring book, Mickey Mantle. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to play with this for sure. <laughs> uh, so so oh. what, what uh, Ashton is showing is uh, he, he bought a piece. Thank you, by the way. Thank you for the, for getting those. But I, um, yeah, usually I do stickers. Yeah. And then. Lately, if I know if I know who you are, it's like like well, he'll like Mickey Mantle, and yeah. I'll do a little sketch before I um I send the piece out, and it's just black and white, and I'm like, I'm just gonna keep that as a thank you thing, and you know they'll they'll yeah. have their own life. <laughs> For sure, yeah, no, it's super cool, it's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've always like that's so important to me because. I'm sure you feel the same way, like, you know, way back in the day, the first photographs that I sold, I still feel that way every time I see a sale come through. Mm, like, yeah. I, like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, and so, like, saying thank you is so important. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I was yeah. doing stickers, but then... I was like, these drawings are cool. Yeah, like you're right. That's something to think about, actually. That's a good idea. A little thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean, 
like with these little watercolors, it costs nothing to make, you know, 50 copies of those. I could do that for like five bucks and then just give out little thank you cards to people. Little yeah, well, watercolors. Handmade baseball card. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But just having that gratitude. <laughs> It's yeah. an important period. Absolutely. So your family I'm, family's from uh, Guatemala? My dad is. My mom yeah. is from El Salvador. Oh, okay. And uh, you said you were born in Chicago, raised raised there until you were five? We moved when I was five. But yeah, okay. I was born in the cold, windy city. I like Chicago. And now I can't stand the cold. Yeah. <laughs> The Texas humidity is different, man. Well, it's supposed to I, snow uh, here on Monday. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was back in Austin for like a year recently, and uh, I hadn't lived there in like five years, and the spring was incredible. I mean, it was like from God. It was mm -hmm. so good for like three months, and I'd never experienced a spring like that my whole life in Texas. And uh, And then as soon as it hit, it was done. As soon as it was done, it was done. Like that day, there was no come. There was no come down. It was just like, nope. It's instantly 103 with humidity. <laughs> you know, like the, the springtime from God is over. Yeah, the heat here is well. You know what? We don't have as much humidity where I am. It's oh yeah. Drier. Yeah. But North Houston Texas. was a sauna. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's like Houston is different, man. I I lived on um on the coast when I was a kid. I lived. I went to high school in Brazoria County. You ever been down there? Like Surfside Beach, Lake Jackson. And uh, it's called the mosquito capital of the world. Or at least that's what they call it down there. Mm. <laughs> Not yeah, fun. Yeah. So were you in Houston or? All over, literally. My mom. Yeah. So my dad was in. Do you know where Bastrop is? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so my dad's Austin. in. Yeah. So my dad uh, actually had a little cafe in Bastrop, a coffee house when I was a kid uh, for like eight years. He had a really popular coffee house. And it was really the only, it was like the bastion of like art and uh, subversiveness in Bastrop. It was like the only thing like it in the county. And, um, you know, it had a little Austin connection, like a direct Austin link. And so there were always artists coming through there and, it was a cool, it was a cool little, you know, way to grow up, a cool thing to see my dad doing, being different in a small conservative town like that. But he's lived in Cedar Creek for 20 years. That's Bastrop County. So that's like 20 minutes outside of Austin, 20 minutes outside of Bastrop. And then my mom, hmm. she lived in Abilene like multiple times when I was a kid, which is West Texas. And then she lived in Lake Jackson, which is Brazoria County, and then she lived in oh, okay. uh, yeah. Tennessee. I mean, she Lake would move around. I didn't realize that was Brazoria. But yeah, I know Lake Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved a lot, except for, you know, when I lived with my dad, I was pretty much stationary. But my mom, for whatever reason, she was just one of those people that, like, couldn't stay in one place. And usually the places that we moved were not cool. <laughs> it wasn't like we were moving there for any special reason. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, I'm interested to see this. I haven't used StreamYard before, but like I'm hearing your audio, so I think it retains everything, even when uh, it freezes and glitches. Oh, perfect. The video will look bizarre for me, but <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. So then it'll have a lot of me talking over you saying you're frozen. <laughs> well, you, you said you're frozen a few times. It's the frozen yeah. episode. <laughs> oh yes that's good frozen yes that's perfect <laughs> yeah no i'm yeah i'm, I'm excited because uh, i was using zoom before but this looks good and this does look good i think yeah. like i saw you can kind of chop it up in the on their website oh okay that's cool like that's crazy <laughs> Because I was yeah. going to get um, the Adobe Video Suite, but I might not. I, yeah, I, no, I, like... learn, I learned a lesson doing when I started this. And that's how I started doing the ramblings. 
but because I was doing the kind of this format, and I was putting a lot of work into it. And at some point I realized that's too much work. <laughs> like I can't, <laughs> I can't handle it on my own because I don't have a producer. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm generally a one man band. I'm not there yet. So yeah. it's like, you, you have to simplify things. So I started doing the, the rambling thing like this works. And then um, I was like, thank you for, for asking. Cause uh, I, um, and I know I put the call out there, and a few people have, oh, yeah. have, have said they wanted to come on, but I, I appreciate it so much. For it's sure. Like, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, uh, there were a couple of episodes where you said something that directly resonated, and I was like, oh, I want to talk to him about that. So yeah. yeah. And then you Very said directly, cool. you were like, if anybody wants to come on, hit me up. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I need to say that more. Definitely. So <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear some more from more art artistic folks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that they, they're definitely around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, that that's what I love about again social media is so great because it, I think about my kids growing up with it, and it's it's so much easier to find your people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's funny, the ADHD thing, because one of the things that I've read is that we tend to find each other. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Well, yeah, I think, like, uh, what I'm doing attracts a lot of, like, seemingly middle-aged men with ADHD, because I'll just get random, hey, will you do uh, Ali versus Cleveland Williams with a ring? Or maybe a Willie Mays, or maybe would you do uh, the guy from Planet of the Apes? And it'll, it'll just like random, like just whatever is going through their mind in that moment, you know, like their their kid, their inner kid is like triggered. I love that though. It's great. I, I love, mean, it's a beautiful it. thing. It, um, yeah. I think the pandemic, one of its positive effects was it brought out that inner kid in so many people. Yeah. And, yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I think that's a great thing because it's important. That little kid's important. Yeah, he definitely is. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, I mean. Like, I think uh, I, now I've got uh, a niece. She's two. And then she has a couple of step siblings who are like nine and 11. And so I try to just exhibit the inner child to them in a responsible way, you know, but while still teaching them things, but it's yeah. like kids need to see the representation of somebody who's, you know, responsible or, or like a, a healthy, I guess, mentally healthy adult that, that also is in touch with their inner child, you know? And so I definitely try to try to pass that on as much as I can. Yeah. Well, the, the little monster thing that I'm doing. Um, so during the pandemic, I did uh, kind of online ones. And it's very much, and I, I still do some of them virtual. Like I'll, I'll get hired to do them. And it's very much about just encouraging the, the shapes are very minimal and just showing that you don't need much to make stuff yeah and yeah and celebrating that and empowering that you know i am um, yeah because we were talking earlier about how like teachers and saying you did this wrong and i don't believe in that right like how are you doing it wrong yeah because like, this is not the way you want it like yeah <laughs> Yeah. expression man i mean they told van gogh what he was doing was wrong <laughs> you know right. it's just generations of people who are wrong at their time <laughs> in their, in, for their time yeah totally yeah. or daniel johnston a perfect example yeah, there are yeah. so many times when i'll introduce somebody to daniel johnston and they're like i like it i just 
I don't like his voice. I'm like, you don't get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's about how bad his voice is. That's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like when um, American Idol first hit. Uh huh. That was amazing. I was I 10. Like the first, I like the first <laughs> episodes, and then, I'm like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like funny. the auditions. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> right. The auditions were hilarious. <laughs> and people would, people would show up just to ham it up. People who knew that they weren't <laughs> trying to be singers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that was like the first, you know, that was like the first um, like Instagram prank video, basically. <laughs> yeah. What was I thinking about? There was something I was thinking about like that that was as a throwback like that before there was social media. Like how things uh, existed. Oh, it was I think I talked about it yesterday. Like you know, people talking smack online and you know how if you did that in person <laughs> it wouldn't right. go well. It wouldn't and, no. And so there isn't that repercussion. So, yeah, yeah. And were you were you like a like a rough kid growing up? Were you a punk or something? Or were you like? Did you play sports at all? Were you in wrestling or anything? I did. Um, I guess in sixth grade, seventh grade, sports started. So I played all the sports. Um. I think that, thinking about the ADHD with football, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I, I would, um, I had a, a guy in the huddle who would tell me where to push the guy. Yeah. But I, yeah. I just was uh, lost. <laughs> I had a similar experience with football. I like didn't, I just <laughs> knew there was someone in front of me who I needed to move out of the way. That's it. So many people talking. Like, yeah. And then, like, and the, there's these numbers and what? It, and then they throw a flag. Right. I'm like, I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, this isn't fun. And then right. I, I played, so I played, I went through the gamut of sports. And then in high school, I didn't play anything, but there was a Taekwondo club. Nice. And I joined that. And that was, that was cool. Yeah. Um, but, and I went to um, an all boys school. <laughs> really? So my existence was just, bizarre yeah yeah I, I wouldn't do that to my kid and it was my choice because we lived out we lived near waller it was hockley and um it was either keep going to school out there which i wasn't enjoying or i could go to this private school which was nice and um yeah and you know through the years i think i've had a love-hate relationship with but yeah, but no, I, I was just, it, that changes that, um, I guess that high school era, I was just an angry kid in uh, an all boys school, because. <laughs> right, for obvious reasons. I miss the female gender. <laughs> yeah, because they're taking a necessary component out of the adolescent experience. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I look at all of us who graduated from there. I'm like, unless you were well off and I was not one of those kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, you know, your, your life rocked, but you know, if you didn't have a car, you know, it, you're, it was, it was different. It was a different ecosystem, I guess. Yeah. Being out in the country is hard when you're a teenager. I remember being at my dad's and just like, yeah. In the summertime, just like, out there my dad's at work my stepmom's at work i'm out there for like eight to ten hours a day just whatever i can think of and obviously i was doing a lot of reading and and creating yeah. which was good but then like i remember one year uh, fourth grade year was great but then like the summer between fourth and fifth grade all my friends moved and so i was just on this island in the country and it was just like oh it was <laughs> it was rough yeah so yeah. You said that you have a degree in philosophy. Uh -huh. Who's your favorite, um, I guess, Western philosopher? Uh, 
I don't know that I have a favorite. I like you... the, I just like the gamut of it. The, the first, how I became a philosophy major was, so we had the intro class and this professor, cause I went to University of St. Thomas. So he taught, you know, intro to philosophy he went through as many philosophers he and it was eastern it was western and he just went through the gamut and i was like wow and that's that adhd thing like give me, <laughs> give me this information right and, um give me yeah I, I was i was hooked and then he got fired because you know these guys were all thomists <laughs> Okay. And, you know, it was just stupid that he was teaching anybody else. And I didn't realize that until he was gone. And then I go into this other class. And I forget what the teacher was saying, but he said, I said, well, what about, you know, what Sartre said, existentialism? He's like, I've never read Sartre. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're a doctor. Right. You're a doctor of philosophy. How That's do you crazy. It's great that you have the thing you believe in, but how do you not look outside of that? Right. And so, yeah, I never had a favorite. I don't think I am. Um, the most amusing ones were the the postmodernists, like Ayers. Do, do you know AJ Ayers? No, I know Sartre. Yeah, Sartre. Fun stuff. And then, yeah, and, and deep stuff, definitely. But it's it, got some good stuff. Like the, that, 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 what's that? What's it? Oh, I, I, I read a book about uh, a book of his about anti Semitism, but anyways, go on. Yeah, he uh, he's an interesting dude, yeah. <laughs> but the, yeah, when you got to the postmodern thing, it was pretty much illustrating how everything was meaningless. Oh, like like um like Kant or um not Kant uh, Camus, right? Is he a postmodernist? Yeah, absurdist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is absurdism postmodernism? Is that in the same? Those are more like art movements, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which yeah, a lot of that came out of that. Like um, some of my favorite literary authors, Donald Barthelme. I don't know. He. Uh, he actually was a professor at the University of Houston. Oh, cool. Before before he died, like he had a good run there. Nice. But his he has a, a lot of books, but the Dead Fathers one where these two children are dragging their dead father through this <laughs> landscape. And that's that's the plot of the book until they get to the end. Whoa. So that, Sounds like a painting. That's what, so yeah, the you're right. Like the meaningless thing, you know, spurred a lot of that. Yeah. So I, I guess if there's an era, I like that because I like the idea still that you know this means anything, and that there's a power in that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That you can thus just be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it goes I, uh... back. Go ahead. Oh, I don't have anything very deep to add to that, but I agree <laughs> with with the uh, like the liberation of feeling like human existence is meaningless, cancerous, and so there's not much to worry about. We place the worry on ourselves, but we could just play yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it goes back to the looseness we were talking about. I think that's what that is. You know, it's like, you know, what's it matter? Yeah. What's it matter if like this portrait's nose is crooked? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it, yeah, it just that's the way it is, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it or, yeah. It's it's just choices. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Oh, I think I lost that. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, okay. Are you a host? <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. Let me see. 
So what I did is I put my audio on. So right now I can't hear you if you're talking. <laughs> but I will, uh, let's see. I put my audio on a separate device. And now I'm, I'm paying for that. Let's see. Oop. Let's see if I can get it back. Again, master podcaster. There we go. Now, <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I, I might wrap this up soon here. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, I could see the title being the Frozen episode. I could see it Frozen. being master, master podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah well cool. i make no apologies this is who i am yeah of course <laughs> no i appreciate it man. i really appreciate yeah. you having me on it's funny like um because yeah this is I mean, it's been years i guess since i had somebody else on but uh <laughs> your sister, i think your sister was the last one i listened to that episode no that was that was an early episode yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That was like number two, I think. Oh. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but I forgot like how much um, how much you have to juggle to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make make things fun. look okay. I yeah, like the right. idea of. Sorry, go on. I oh, know no, that's fine. I like the idea of doing a a podcast like this where you're kind of just rambling i like that idea yeah. um I, I think uh like recently I, I turned on my recorder and my lavalier because i was i was gonna make a little like a little one minute like professional documentary for my page and so <laughs> i was just talking into this lavalier and i was surprised at how long i could just go for and explaining whatever <laughs> when i started I got the idea for the, the 22 minute thing. I was like, man, that's a long time. <laughs> I did the first one. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I guess it works. Yeah. It's that's it's fun. I'm surprised anybody listens to that. <laughs> How many people listen? I've been curious. Do you know? It's a little um, hard to measure. And it like it seems like different episodes. Because I put it kind of different places. It's on YouTube. It's on um, like Spotify or whatever. Like anything that's like that. Like Apple. I'm not even yeah. sure as far as the audio version. Where all it's going. Um. So the frozen episode, but <laughs> yeah, I put them on different, different things, but I, it, it's not a big following, but like I said, the idea that anybody, what I do see is the numbers come up, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, it's not, it's you not can see fun. the numbers on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. But, cool. but see, I put it on that channel and then I put it on my other channel sometimes. Mm -hmm. So well, well, I'm, I almost took us into live stream, but then I was like, I totally don't know what I'm doing. I would, that would be a complete disaster. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I haven't talked to, to Ashton about it. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I would have been all right with it. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, but I think that would be different then because then like maybe we'd be answering comments. Maybe. I feel, maybe I feel weird. Watching. I feel weird. <laughs> I've tried live streaming before and it, it is a strange feeling for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I there's the I was doing okay with it for a while. And then um I, I might force myself to do it some more. I, I tried ones where I was drawing, but I just get so into the drawing that I miss comments and then I'm like, oh, then that's not nice. Yeah. Right. So I mean it's 
I'm sure people expect for their comments to be missed, but if it's like only a couple of people in the stream, then I could see them <laughs> being like, he's ignoring me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, no, I, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. But, but I could see at the end of like some of these streams that I had missed comments. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. Hmm. Yeah, it's tricky. Do you yeah. watch um do you watch many documentaries? I love documentary. Um nice. I don't watch much anymore. Parenthood changes so many things. Yeah, you must be just parenting nonstop until you're painting, right? It's just Yeah, I pretty much take the night shift. Right now I'm on the night shift. Um <laughs> And then I get my sleep, I get up, I do, I'm father. <laughs> how, how, how much sleep would you say you're, you're getting? Are you getting like, are you falling, are you falling asleep at like four in the morning or two in the morning? I get, I get five to six hours. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. not bad. Yeah. Um, nice. But yeah, no, I love documentary. It. Um, I, I love that you sent me one of your films. Oh yeah, let me plug it. If anybody's yeah. interested, check out my film on YouTube. Ashton Barker Films uh, is the name of the channel. It's called Watch Over the Medicine slash Festival Edit. Yeah, yeah, that uh, was very... a um, that was like a culmination of basically like seven years of experience filming that. The process of filming that was crazy because it was. Central Texas, dead of summer, sleeping outside. There were copperheads in my camp every single night. People were literally killing copperheads around my tent every night. There were fire ants. I was constantly like battling dehydration and trying to get interviews with people all day. It was a really, um, it was a character building experience. It was, it was a good experience. <laughs> and they ultimately, the people in that film were not happy with my depiction of them, even though I felt oh, like I had a pretty neutral stance, you know? Yeah. But they wanted more of a glorification, less neutral. So when I was doing I the last non profit, um, I made a film night and that was a cool night because it was local people and they would bring their films and you know, a lot of them were bad, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I loved, I just, I'm like, I loved the, I'm like, wow, you guys are working on these. And yeah, um, yours was really good. Thanks. Yeah. That yeah. I mean, cool. documentary is, um, you know, that's as much a part of my artistic life as anything else. I haven't been focusing on it lately, but it's definitely something that I've always dreamed about doing until I started doing it a few years ago. And like every time I'm making one, I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is amazing. I can't believe people yeah. are letting me film their divorce right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that, that's the thing about like your creatives, all these things you do, you may put it to the side, but it's always there. Exactly. It always informs the next thing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the weird thing about like, like I said, the eBay thing. Cause the other thing is that I'll go to estate sales. I'll go to thrift shops and I see all this weird stuff. That's part of my fascination. Like I found these popular mechanic magazines. I was just <laughs> looking through like from like 1962 and just like absorbing stuff to somehow integrated into the creative so that's cool <laughs> yeah. that's really cool but, but like you um yeah you know you know, you have the documentary to the side but it's there oh for sure it is i mean yeah. like for example the like what i'm doing is really a process of documentation i'm talking about history with what i'm doing yeah. each one of these things is telling a story of some kind you know I was going to say, if you haven't thought about it, um, like the images, 
the mm -hmm. pictures you take of the wooden things. You should float those yeah. on t-shirts. You think so? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a good idea. Have you done, um, I should give you my referral code if you haven't. Sure. <laughs> but T, T Public? I don't think I've done it, but I've made t-shirts and like with my own designs and I love making t-shirts. I love putting stuff on t-shirts. So I thought about that with my photography too, but that's a good idea. They hit me up last year and this guy kept sending an email and, you know, I get solicitation like this all the time. And he's like, look, I'll, I'll build your store and then you can just populate it if you want. And he's like, just give me some images. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, I gave him maybe 20. Then he set it up. And in my email, it starts telling me how much money I'm making. Really? It's like, whoa. Now, it's not much. Like, you're cut of what they sell is very little but currently each month i get two hundred dollars from those sales no kidding so if you just keep populating um yeah. that number grows because like yeah um when he signed me up it was around christmas time so that was that was a good i think the first one was like a hundred dollars it's like wow so i started <laughs> and i and every I, I still feed it. Um, and, ah, okay, I'm back. <laughs> but on my on my website, there's a. Uh, it's managed by this company. And then you're you're limited to your crowd. T Public is working more like on an eBay level. Okay. Like you've probably seen their ads. And they Yeah, I've seen their ads. So do they up everywhere? They have basically what I'm what I'm ascertaining is that they'll have an inventory of your stuff with your images on it that you don't have to order. Somebody will order it and then they make it and then they take a profit from that. They get most of the profit. Yeah. They, they're doing very well on me. Yeah. <laughs> so people are buying, people are buying t-shirts of your stuff. I get, I get like this month it was, uh, they just paid me out. It's like 260 something. Nice. For you cool. in essence, getting royalties, very low royalties, but. But I mean, like, uh, you're, you're not having to put that stuff out there. You're just paying yeah. for the t-shirts to be made. Yeah, so that's there's no, Yeah, that's amazing. I, I don't like I don't like making prints. I don't want to deal with them. Even on my website, like like I don't want to deal with any of that. Yeah. Like I give them the images. They make money. They give me a little cut. Yeah. I'm good with that. And my my images are floating out there on on and it's different things like they do mugs and stickers and I think even prints and I'm good with that. But so cool. uh, your, your little guys. Yeah. Like, you know, you know how to work a camera. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. And even I've also know. considered uh, just doing, I, it's like, I have this, this like uh, urge to just paint them, you know, cause their little yeah. caricatures just do, them just yeah life stuff which sounds yeah. fun um that's that cool fun. well this yeah, has been that was, that was a thought up? No, yeah no i like that I i'm definitely gonna look into t public How, what is is it a membership i'm gonna send you the link okay yeah, <laughs> so i want a sure. referral but it, i don't work for them <laughs> <laughs> but, um but it's how just, do you get markers? How do you get free stuff like from TikTok? Because I have a good following. Yeah. Um, you get people that'll send you stuff. 
<laughs> that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing I'm very conscious of. I'm working that, and I'm like, there's a next thing, and I want to be early on that. Yeah, totally, totally. Because I did, I did all right with TikTok, but I wasn't early, early. Yeah, for sure. It wasn't I mean, on my radar. But that's you know part what's of... funny, It is. Yeah, no, that is. I mean, what's funny is that uh, I was definitely on YouTube back in like 2008, you know, making what I yeah. thought were pretty funny videos back then. And um, I didn't know how to build a following then, and I just kind of put it down. But if I had stuck it out on YouTube, I could have had probably a good following by this point, you know. So, yeah, it is it is important to be an early adopter. But it's, yeah, but all of that's experience, too, because I did, I was doing, there's some old stuff of me out there. But I look at those, it was like, I had no clue what I was doing, but that was such a good learning thing. And yeah. Even, but that's the thing, you were talking about, like, TikTok being addicting. I don't mind that, because you're more likely to catch on to a trend right like like even with the ebay thing there's uh have you seen what whatnot no so whatnot is pretty much live auctions like i'll sit here and here's what i'm thinking because i'm going to do it with like records to begin with but once okay. i get a groove on it you know you have your own following and you can draw from what's really organic right now. But I think it's an early thing. It's been around a while and some people do really well selling, you know, random stuff, but I want to do it with the records. And then I want to think of a way to do it with my inventory, like okay. hit my email list, hit my socials and then have them, oh. you know, even if I get a few, yeah. And they're getting stuff at a steal, and I get a little bag. Right. <laughs> a little That's bag. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. it. Some loot. <laughs> when is your birthday, by the way? When's your birthday? What's your sign? February 21st. I'm a Pisces. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Right, what right. about you? April 18th, Aries. You're fire. Yeah. You're... Is Pisces? That's water, right? That's water. Uh huh. The, yeah. Um, my my childhood friend, we're really tight. He's an airy. It's a my son's an airy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. My niece is an Aries. My dad's an Aries. I'm surrounded by fire. My sister's a Sag. My girlfriend's a Sag. <laughs> my brother's I a Pisces collect, though. I collect Libras because they're all about balance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's yeah, uncanny. Yeah, yeah, uncanny. Uh they're, I guess I admire them. That. What's that? I guess I admire them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're a good one to have in the collection for sure. They're uh I feel like I admire them and they frustrate me at the same time because they're so <laughs> good at what they do. <laughs> they're so balanced. <laughs> That's funny. All right. I think I'm gonna end us. But um yeah, stay stay on after the, the jump here. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you don't mind. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, for sure. Let me see. But yeah, um, once again, Mini League Heroes on Instagram. Mini League Heroes. And, and what's the, the website? The website is miniLeagueHeroes.weebly.com. And I'm going to be adding to the shop here pretty soon. I've got a couple on there right now, but yeah. Well, yeah, man. Well, man, thank you. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. This has been a blast. Let's go, let's go post, post ramble.